Hi and welcome to this video which discusses the basics of our Pit Stop Tachograph application program. We're just going to go into the layout of the screen here and along the top we have the menu bar and this item here is data and mainly concerns itself with the importing of uh, your digital data and the storage and backing up. Next we have the report site menu option. Uh, this is for existing reports. Um, you can reopen them, print them and uh, you can also sort of drop and drag them into a, an email if uh, they're requested by someone. Next option is infringements and this just gives you a basic summary really of the EU drivers hours and the working time directive. A more fuller description can be found in the user guide uh, which can be found underneath the help menu option here. This, uh, this item here. This has everything you need to know about pit stop and uh, if it's not in there then uh, then do contact us but uh, you should find all the information you possibly need in this uh, guide including when things uh, uh, go a little bit wrong. The next one pit stop quick start guide we recommend that you read this uh, short guide as it gives a, an overall picture of what pit stop can do outside of the, the general you know the infringement analysis Lots of other items here. Um, you can branch off here to a website, the government website, which uh, gives you the EC drivers hours, uh, a quick guide, and the regulations for LGVs and passenger service vehicles, amongst other things. So that's the menu bar covered. Now, next down, we have all the tabs. Um, these tabs are arranged in logical order. Uh, so the first one is the Manage Data tab and uh, on this uh, particular tab uh, you have the importing of data and the backing up. This is absolutely essential actually the backing up of data. If uh, the DVSA come calling uh, then they will want to see the raw data so it's absolutely essential that you back up this data in case your, your computer hard drive crashes or it gets stolen or your computer is stolen or for whatever reason really. Now a word on importing this option here, it copies all the data from your download device to the local drive on your computer. And this covers tools such as uh, the DigiDown, uh, tools from Siemens and Stoneridge. But there is a slight anomaly. Uh, you may have a DigiView or a DigiFob Pro, in which case this option will not work for it. You will need to uh, get the DigiConnect software from the TACOSYS website. It's a free offering from them and the user guide, pit stop user guide, will tell you how to set up the parameters in that program which will enable you to transfer automatically the data from from that device, DigiView or Digi DigiFob Pro, to pit stop's uh, local backup folder. Now there's also this option here, read. This is a great way actually for reading driver cards. It's, uh, these uh, devices uh, they're just dedicated to reading driver cards and they can be connected directly to your computer permanently uh, if you wish. Uh, it's a USB device. They're quite cheap and um, the very convenient way of, uh, of uh, downloading your digi driver's digi cards which means you don't have to go to the, the vehicle to download via the tachograph or indeed use a handheld device. You can just use one of these devices. Uh, do read the chapter in the user guide uh, because you more than likely will have to turn off a Microsoft service which will attempt to grab hold of these devices and exclude pit stop. So that service needs to be turned off. Full instructions are in the, as I say, in the, in the user guide. Now the critical bit is backing up your data. Here we, there's various ways of doing it. Um, you can email uh, the, uh, the raw digital data off-site to, to say your home or somewhere like that. Somewhere that's physically away from the computer. It's not the recommended way because the recommended way would be to use the backup uh, facility. Uh, this, you can, with this you can back up your data to an external storage drive or a memory stick and again keep the that device physically in a separate place from the computer. Now by far the best way 
of uh, backing up your data and this of course only applies if you have a server you're attached to a server uh, is to upload it to that server and what you do you set up a folder on the server and uh, we you introduce that server uh, that string the URLs URI to uh, pit stop through the setup tab which we'll come up on to in a second uh, but this is a great way of of uh, backing up your data uh, just as long as of course uh, that your server is backed up as well so we move to the setup tab now after entering your license key this will be the first tab that you come to um, you have to enter various details like for instance your uh, company name and if you intend to use e e any of the emailing facilities you will need to set up this one to the my email field and also uh, if you're sending data off-site using that or backing up your data using that email facility then you need to fill in the to email field so just working now down through the fields um, if you recall I, men I mentioned uh, you can back up your data to a server that's if you're connected to a server and you can use this button here to navigate to the folder that's on the server and uh, that will populate this this field here assumed rest um, there is a description in the user guide but basically what it means if, if the card digi card has been withdrawn from the tachograph and it's not set to rest if the duration of the time it's out of the tachograph is nine hours or more then we assume it as rest if you set this to no, then what is on the card is sacrosanct. So that, so if the card is pulled on work, then work will appear uh, in the uh, on the reports. Now the working time directive. Oh, you'll have fun here. <laughs> the uh, there's a chapter in the user guide on the working time directive, and these are all the parameters. Uh, that can be set for the working time directive depending on which method you're going to use basically if um, if you have drivers who are driving sort of erratically maybe sort of I don't know, 20 hours one week uh, and maybe 30 the next or whatever it may be it's probably best to smooth it out using the rolling method rather than the fixed but again refer to the chapter in the user guide as this will give you a an in-depth look at the, the working time directive. Now downloads. Um, as you're probably aware uh, tachographs need to be downloaded every 90 days or less and so we can uh, we can choose the, the number here. It's In the UK now it's now 90 days and the same for digicards 28 days. There's a reminder task which works in the background and uh, this will uh, remind you of any tachographs or digi cards that need remind uh, need downloading. The days in advance can be specified here. So, for instance, if it's 28 days for a digi card, then seven days before it's due to be downloaded, you will start to get reminders. And this is the time of the day that the reminder task will run. You can change that, of course. And what what does this little field do? Reminder program to come to website to later. Oh yes, we can actually go off to the website here and and uh, see what the latest release of Pit Stop is. And that will be included in the reminder program. So if your if your uh, uh, release of Pit Stop is out of date, you'll also get a reminder on that as well. Now. Pit stop comes with quite a sophisticated reminder system apart from uh, your tachographs and, and digicard downloads. Um, you have vehicle reminders as well, such as insurance, tax, MOT, etc. And you can also have two user defined reminder fields. And uh, the way that reminders work is that, uh, it, uh, for, let's take insurance for instance. Um, you'll get reminded um, so many weeks before uh, the insurance is due and if you've got manual stop 
this means that uh, you will you will uh, continue to be reminded until you actually fill in the details uh, on the vehicles tab for that particular vehicle that the insurance has been paid. If you choose auto stop then what will happen is that uh, once it reaches the uh, the deadline day after that you will stop receiving reminders regardless of whether you've actually uh, renewed your insurance or not. So the manual method, manual stop is probably the best one really because the, it just continues to nag you until uh, until that uh, particular reminder has been dealt with. Now, uh, also with reminders, uh, as as I say, the the reminder task here that will come up automatically at the specified time of day with any reminders or anything anything that's uh, due or overdue but you can also send these reminders to an email address in here for instance and once uh, you've made your changes oh just one other thing um, here we have details the SMTP server now this only applies if you want to use your own uh, SMTP server for sending and receiving emails and you fill in the details here. If these are left blank then when you're sending emails then uh, you'll be using Roxanne's uh, SMTP server so best to leave these uh, blank. Uh, at the station um, this is if you're working abroad uh, if any of your vehicles are traveling abroad you need to print off one of these and these are the details uh, or some of the details anyway that will appear on that uh, report. Then we have the screen width and the activity colors. Um, you can change these uh, but we suggest you just leave them uh, to default to the to the figures that uh, come with uh, pit stop. Now once all those once all those details have been uh, completed just click the save updates button and information is saved and that's it and we're next we're ready now to move on to the next item